Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry, starring Elizabeth Taylor. Tonight's DuPont play, I, Mary Peabody, is adapted from the bestseller, The Peabody Sisters of Salem. And here's our star, Elizabeth Taylor. Peabody. I'm not nearly as handsome as my younger sister, Sophia, nor as intellectual as my elder sister, Elizabeth. To make matters worse, I am the only one of us to inherit our father's painful shyness. Well, I shall overcome it. The very next time I meet a young man, I shall be gracious and charming and, and perhaps even a little bold. I shall smile at him and... Oh, goodness me. Six o'clock already. Mrs. Clark has been chiding me for being late for supper. I better go down right now. Time, 1833. Place, the boarding house of one Mrs. Clark in Boston. Good evening, Mrs. Clark. Oh, good evening, Mary. Can I help you set the table? Oh, no, thank you. Will your sister Sophia be down to supper tonight? No. She has one of her headaches again. Oh, shame. Poor girl that she's so delicate, so pretty and poetic looking, too. <laughs> Not like your sister Elizabeth. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Clark. Oh, uh, well, good evening, sir. I trust I'm not late for supper, my first night. Oh, no. No, indeed. Uh, <clears throat> oh, Mary, my dear, may I present Mr. Horace Mann, Miss Peabody? How do you do? How do you do, Miss Peabody? <clears throat> well, I must see how Annie's getting along in the kitchen. Will you excuse me, please? Uh, uh, will you be here, Mrs. Clark's long, Mr. Mann? Well, uh, as long as the state assembly is in session. Oh. oh, I didn't know you were a member of... I mean, politics must be a very interesting career, is it not? Oh, interesting enough, although actually it's what you'd call a sideline with me. Oh? You see, my real interests lie in the field of education. Really? Well, that's very interesting. You know, my sister and I have a small school. Indeed. Oh, but of course, Miss Peabody's school. I've heard a great deal about it here in Boston. Well, I'm, I'm very happy to meet the founder of the famous institution. Oh, but th that's not me. I, I mean, that's my elder sister, Elizabeth. Oh. Uh, Miss Peabody, I wonder if someday you'll allow me to pay your school a visit. Why, we... We'd be delighted. Good. Uh, uh, have you always had an interest in education, sir? Miss Peabody, I was one of 13 children. And because my father was poor, I had only a few days of schooling until I was nearly 15. My own experiences have convinced me that we should have, throughout this great new country of ours, a sufficiency of public schools which all children, rich and poor alike, could attend and... Oh, but I'm afraid I'm boring you. Oh, no. No, indeed, sir. I find it most interesting. Please go on. Mary, are you in here? Oh, Elizabeth. Yes, here I am, dear. Elizabeth, allow me to present Mr. Horace Mann, my sister, Miss Peabody. How do you do, Miss Peabody? How do you... Mr. Horace Mann? The famous educator? At your service, madam. Why, I've read your book on the theory of the public school. It was fascinating. Really? Well, I, I, I am pleased. Elizabeth, Mr. Mann said he'd like to pay us a visit at the school. Yes, indeed I would. I'd like to observe how you handle the younger children especially. Would you? Would you really? Well, those are my classes, and I'd be glad to show you. Now, there's you. nothing very unusual about what we're doing with those tiny tots, Mary. I should like to have Mr. Mann visit my classes, the older children. But, Elizabeth, Mr. Mann said... Why don't you come tomorrow, Mr. Mann? Tomorrow? Yes, come at 11 when Mary is taking her little ones out for a walk. That way we'll have the whole place to ourselves. Hello, Sophia. Why, Mary, back from dinner so soon? I wasn't hungry. How's your headache now, dear? Better. Any new boarders at the table? One, a, a Mr. Horace Mann. Oh, is he nice? What does he look like? Why, I, I didn't notice. 
I wasn't particularly interested. Oh. Well, um, were his manners agreeable? I guess so. Uh, he's interested in education. When he talks about it, he gets very intense. Intense? How? Oh, his eyes light up. They're very dark and deep-set and brilliant. And his hair, it's prematurely white, you know, and, and he sort of tosses it. And the interesting way he gestures with his long, graceful fingers. <laughs> I see. You just didn't happen to notice what he looked like. Oh. Uh, was Elizabeth there? Well, yes, of course. Oh. What do you mean by oh? Well, I was just thinking. Of course, we all know what a wonderful person Elizabeth of is. Of course. So energetic and intelligent and, and such a good sister to us. Yes, she really is. But, Mary, you mustn't let her overshadow you so with, with everybody. It happens all the time. Sophia, I think you're right. Why, just a night with Mr. Mann... I she... imagined as much. Now, the thing is, Mary, are you going to do anything about it? Yes, I am. From now on, Sophia, I'm going to be entirely different. I'm going to be bold, forward, dashing. I'm going to... Oh, Elizabeth. Feel better, Sophia? Good. Mary, will you lend me your black bomb bombazine for this evening? My new dress? Yes. What did you think of our new boarder, Mr. Mann? Oh, I think he's... Oh, said... you'd like him, Sophia. When you feel better, you must come downstairs and I'll introduce you to him. Oh, but now I must hurry. Are you going out, Elizabeth? Yes, with Mr. Mann, to a lecture. Oh, and Mary, may I borrow your gloves to go with the dress? Well, I... And your blue scarf, dear? Oh, thank you. Now I must hurry. I don't want to keep Mr. Mann waiting. Good night, Sophia. Good night, Mary. Well, I was certainly dashing, wasn't I? I certainly stood up for myself that time. Well, the weeks went by. I saw very little of Mr. Horace Mann, and then only on the stairs and in the dining room. But I was resolved that when the next opportunity presented itself, I would be as I had promised Sophia, dashing and, and even bold. One day as I was crossing Boston Common. Well, Miss Peabody, good morning. May I uh, walk with you? Why, certainly, Mr. Mann. I'm on my way to the offices of the Evening Star to place an advertisement for a secretary. A secretary? Yes. Is it... is it to help with your work in the field of education? It is, Miss Peabody. Uh, Mr. Mann. Yes? I... I trust you will not think me unduly forward, but... Yes, Miss Peabody? I... Yes. I write a very clear hand. Very large, too. You could read it across the street, almost. And, and I'd be very glad, would be most pleased... Yes, Miss Peabody? ...to assist you in preparing your papers. That is, if, if you should think me adequately qualified. Well, Miss Peabody, this is extremely kind of you. No, indeed, I assure and you. And generous, too. I accept your offer gratefully, Miss... Uh, may I... May I perhaps call you Miss Mary, now that we are better acquainted? Why, yes, certainly. I mean, yes. Thank you. And now, pray take my arm and we'll return to the house, shall we? Well, Miss Mary, I should like to get started immediately. Certainly, Mr. Mann. Now, let's see, um... Where had we better work? Upstairs in my room, I suppose. Oh, I, I don't think... What, Miss Mary? Well, I don't think that is not in your room. Oh, of course not. Forgive me, Miss Mary. Uh, uh, where then? Uh, in your room? Oh, no. Oh, I, I, I didn't mean that. Uh, forgive me. Uh, perhaps we could use the schoolroom. We'd be quite alone there. I, I mean... Mr. Mann. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Elizabeth. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Peabody. Look, Mr. Mann, see what I have here. Two tickets to Mr. Ralph Waldo Emerson's lecture tonight. And I hereby invite you to accompany me. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Peabody, but I'm afraid that oh, I... Oh, nonsense. You must come. I've told Mr. Emerson all about you. He's very much interested in meeting you. Is he really? Oh, well, then, in that case, perhaps... But, uh... Mr. Mann, what about the work? I mean, isn't it urgent? I suppose it could wait until tomorrow. After all, a chance of meeting Mr. Emerson. You will forgive me, will you not, Miss Mary? 
Oh, yes. Certainly. I forgive you. You are listening to the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring Elizabeth Taylor as Mary Peabody. Sponsored by the DuPont Company, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. One of the newest of the DuPont Company's better things for better living through chemistry is teal rubberized fabric for convertible auto tops. This improved top fabric is uh, it's made like a sandwich. In the middle is a layer of DuPont neoprene rubber. And on either side are specially woven fabrics dyed to give maximum resistance to fading. Teal rubberized fabric is constructed to retain its original shape and resist shrinkage through long use. Before this new fabric was placed on the market, it was field tested for two years by DuPont in cooperation with the automotive industry. Ask your local car dealer or auto top man about this new fabric for convertible auto tops. Teal rubberized fabric is another of the DuPont company's better things for better living through chemistry. We continue our DuPont play. Mary Peabody sits at the window of a rooming house in Boston, musing about life and a career and Horace Mann. The next afternoon, I did get to work with Horace Mann. It was very pleasant indeed. And I must say, he took great pleasure in complimenting me on my penmanship. He also seemed to listen breathlessly. His wonderful dark eyes glowed with interest at every word I uttered about education. One evening, I arrived home from a stroll on the Carmen to find that poor Sophia had fainted and been carried up to her room. Sophia! Oh, here I am, Mary, in the rocker by the window. Mrs. Claude just told me. Oh, she I'm said... all right now. It, it was just one of my headaches. Uh, uh, Mary, I understand that Mr. Mann paid you a visit at the school today. Yes, he did. What did he have to say? Well, he, he complimented me. Oh, thank goodness, at last. On what? He thinks I have a very sweet, intelligent manner with my pupils. Oh. What about your manner with him? Does he like it? He didn't go into that. Oh. Mary, do you love him? Do you? I... I don't know. Well, I do. And I think you ought to do something about it. Mary, where is Elizabeth tonight? Well, she went to Bronson Alcott's lecture with Mr. Mann. She did, huh? Very well. Mary, I'm going to settle this thing once and for all. You're going to have your chance with Mr. Horace Mann without any competition from Elizabeth. But, Sophia, you can. I can, too. Oh, Mary, sitting here in this rocker tonight, I've thought of the most delicious plan. Now, you just go to your room and leave Elizabeth to me. Poor Sophia. Oh, you poor child. Oh, it's this dreadful climate here in Boston, Elizabeth. I know it. Oh, dear. I wonder if perhaps Dr. Winwoody isn't right after all. Dr. Winwoody? Uh-huh. Remember what he said? Something about uh, a, a sea voyage, wasn't it? A sea voyage? Oh, yes. Don't you remember? He said the invigorating salt air might cure me and... Oh, do you think it might, Elizabeth? Well, it's possible, Sophia. Why don't you try it? Perhaps a trip to Cuba. Oh, or... I couldn't. Why not? Lots of reasons. I couldn't go alone, could I? Well, it isn't genteel. Oh. Of course, if I had someone to go with me... Elizabeth! Why don't you? Me? Yes. 
Oh, you're really the only one who soothes me when I'm ill. But, and... Sophia, how can and I... And you do need a rest, Elizabeth. You've been working so hard. Oh, I'm afraid I can't. I am sorry, Sophia. Oh, it's all right. Oh, oh, my poor head. Oh, dear child. Is it very bad again? Oh, terrible. And getting worse every minute. Oh, perhaps I'd better get Dr. Winwoody. Oh, it's no use. I know what he'd say. Oh. Sophia. Yes, Elizabeth? Do you really want me to go on this trip with you? Oh, yes, Elizabeth. All right. I'll go. You will? Oh, Elizabeth, how good you are to all of us. <laughs> oh, Mary, I, I, I can't help laughing when I think how poor unsuspecting Elizabeth walked right into the trap. I still don't think it's fair. And, and how do I know Horace is interested in me? Well, this is the way to find out, isn't it? By throwing the two of you together. Sophia, couldn't you think of a more genteel phrase? Yes, but I prefer this one. Oh, there you are. Hello, Elizabeth. I have the most incredible news. Mr. Wainfleet of Beacon Hill has offered to sell us his bookstore. He has? Oh, Elizabeth... And it's so successful, too. The terms are generous, and we could make enough money out of it to enlarge the school, and... Oh, isn't it wonderful, Sophia? Well, perhaps. Go on, Elizabeth. Well, there's nothing else to add. Except, of course, that I'll have to remain here in Boston, naturally. Oh. In that case, Elizabeth, I believe I've changed my mind about taking that trip. Oh, Sophia, you can't. You've got to go, for your health. But I tell you... Yes, you need that trip, Sophia. You must go. But, Mary, I'm not going alone. I know. I'm going with you, Sophia. Now, excuse me while I go in and pack. Well, the next day we sailed for Havana. And the trip proved most beneficial to Sophia's health. When we arrived in Cuba, I managed to procure a position as governess with an old Spanish family in the interior. And Sophia came there to live with me. Soon, our only connection with the outside world was the weekly letters that Elizabeth sent us. One day, an especially interesting one arrived. Well, go on, Mary. Read the rest of it. And so, dear Mary, I had a most fascinating conversation with dear Horace Mann last night. Well... Does she say anything about Horace sending his greetings to you or, or, or why he's never written? No. Go on. And when at last he got up to go, I said, Well, now, sir, I do not feel that I have said even half of all I wanted to say. For answer, he took both my hands and drew me for one moment absolutely into his arms. Into his arms? Well... Well, I must say. Go on, Mary. Say it. Sophia, do you feel well enough to go home? Of course. When? As soon as possible. By the very first boat. And the moment I see Elizabeth, I'm going to tell her. Into his arms, indeed. <laughs> Well, Miss Mary, it's a great pleasure to welcome you home again. Thank you, Mr. Mann. Have you seen my sister, Elizabeth? I believe she's uh, giving a lecture this afternoon at Harvard College. That's why she wasn't at the pier to meet you. Oh. I wished to go myself, but, well, uh, I didn't. Thank you for your kind intentions. You were occupied with politics, I presume. No, as a matter of fact, I wasn't. Oh? I refrain from going to the pier at the suggestion of your sister. What? Elizabeth told you not yes. to... Yes. She didn't think it was uh, genteel, since we are not uh, affianced for me to... Uh... One moment, please. Since who are not affianced? You and Elizabeth, or, or you and... Oh, oh, no, no, not Miss Elizabeth. No, indeed. You and I, Miss Mary. That's also why she asked me not to write to you in Cuba. She asked you not to... You see, she had asked me point-blank what my intentions were. 
And I had told her the truth that I... I didn't know. Oh. And then she hastened to mention that it was just as well as it was obvious you were interested only in your career as a teacher, as she is. She did? Elizabeth told you that? Elizabeth? Well... Well, I must say. Mary, how are you? Elizabeth. You look wonderful. Where is Sophia? How does she feel? She's up in her room. Oh, I must go up at once. Dearest, I have so much to say to you. Elizabeth, after you've seen Sophia, I'd be grateful if you stepped into my room. I have a great deal to say to you, too. And this is one time I fully intend to say it. <laughs> Now, Elizabeth, exactly what is the meaning of all this? All what, Mary? All this talk of Horace not to meet me, and you in his arms, and that he shouldn't write me, and I'm not interested in marriage, and you in his arms... Mary, are... are you sure you feel all right? Perhaps the voice... I feel perfectly all right, thank you. And for once in my life, I'm going to say exactly what's on my mind. My dear, my dear, you're raising your voice. Certainly I'm raising my voice. Why shouldn't I? You do it all the time, don't oh, you? Oh, me. Everybody knows how excitable I am. But you, Mary, it's not becoming. It's not genteel. I don't care whether it's genteel or not. And I'll tell you something else, Elizabeth. I'm just as excitable as you are, inside. But I've always had the good manners not to show it, to keep it bottled up. Oh, my poor sister. What have I done to you that makes you speak to me this way? I'll tell you what you've done. For two years now, you've kept me away from the man I love more than anything else in the world. The man I'd willingly die for. And not because you wanted him yourself. No, I could understand that. But because you're so interested in yourself exclusively, and your projects, and your desire to show everyone how brilliant you are, and to run their lives for them. Well, you're not running my life, Elizabeth. And now, with your permission, I'm going downstairs and tell Mr. Horace Mann that I love him very much. And I'd be the happiest woman in the world if he'd kindly do me the favor of marrying me. That's how genteel I am. Miss Mary, I... I couldn't help overhearing what you just said to your sister. Oh! Oh, my goodness. I was just coming up to tell you... Oh, do you suppose... I, I mean, did anybody else hear... Oh, yes. Every boarder in the house was listening. Oh! Oh, my! Miss Mary, when I told you I had not made up my mind, uh, about us, I mean, it was because there was one thing, one, one small thing holding me back. Yes, Mr. Mann? Miss Mary, you were so uh, shy and, uh, and uh, <laughs> genteel. It was almost as though you were lacking in the emotional... Uh, um, uh, attributes a man properly expects uh, of a wife. Uh, do you understand? But, but... Uh... Oh, but after overhearing you just now, Miss Mary, I no longer am aware of this impediment to our marriage. Miss Mary, will you marry me? Oh. Oh, yes, Mr. Mann. Thank you. And you will oblige me, please... By calling me Horace. Oh, yes. Horace. Yes. And so, Horace Mann and I, Mary Peabody, were married. It was a signal for Elizabeth, Sophia, and myself to separate and take our places in the life and society of our times. Elizabeth went on to found the first kindergarten in America. Dear Sophia married a brilliant writer, Nathaniel Hawthorne. As for Horace and myself, well, we went west to found Antioch College and worked towards establishing a public school system. Yet, through the years, and they were many and our paths apart, Elizabeth, Sophia, and I remind, remain close in our hearts. As we take leave of you now, it is our wish you will sometimes think of us not as women of vigor and wit and accomplishment, but rather as we were in the days when we were young, the puberty sisters of Salem.
thanks to Elizabeth Taylor and our cavalcade players for tonight's story, I, Mary Peabody. Did you know that you can now buy low-priced paintbrushes with nylon bristles at your local paint or hardware store? The DuPont Company, working hand-in-hand with paintbrush manufacturers, has invested years of costly research in nylon bristles. Much of this time was spent on tests alone. So at last, nylon paintbrushes are ready for most of those home painting jobs of yours. The DuPont Company does not manufacture paintbrushes. We manufacture the nylon bristles only. DuPont is primarily a manufacturer of basic chemical products. It is DuPont's job to make developments of chemical science available for the householder are made by more than 18 brush manufacturers who contribute to them their own skill, their own experience, their own know-how. All of which is another way of saying that a lot of research and development work has been done so that you, as a householder, may have a truly better paintbrush at a reasonable price for that job around the house, whether it's touching up the woodwork or redecorating the living room. These new nylon paintbrushes lay paint on smoothly. The bristles don't break off, and they can be used in nearly all paints and other finishes. You'll be delighted, too, because they're so easy to keep clean. Interesting facts about paintbrushes with nylon bristles have been gathered from many sources and are included in a new eight-page booklet, How to Choose and Use a Nylon Paintbrush. Ask your local paint or hardware dealer for a free copy. It'll help make your next painting job easier. Nylon bristles for paintbrushes are among the newest of the DuPont Company's Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. <laughs> Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will present the popular Hollywood star, Richard Widmark, in an exciting story of a young officer, a cargo ship in the South Pacific, and the ghost of a famous Confederate general. Be sure to listen to the DuPont Cavalcade next week and our star, Richard Widmark. Tonight's original DuPont play was written by Arthur Arendt and was based on the book The Peabody Sisters of Salem by Louise Hall Tharp, published by Little Brown. Elizabeth Taylor is currently starred with Robert Taylor in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer production, Conspirator. Featured in tonight's cast were Susan Douglas, Anne Seymour, and Richard Waring. Music for the DuPont Cavalcade was composed by Arden Cornwell, conducted by Donald Voorhees. The program was directed by John Zoller. This is Ted Pearson speaking. Ladies and gentlemen, this is National Boys Club Week for providing for the welfare of boys and teaching them to have faith in our country's fundamental principles. The Boys Clubs of America merit the nation's gratitude. The DuPont Cavalcade of America comes to you from the stage of the Belasco Theater in New York and is sponsored by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware, makers of better things for better living through chemistry. Now, baby Snooks and Daddy go to Washington on NBC.